Hi, I'm David Landwehr, a private practice endodontist from Madison, Wisconsin. Determining the location and extent of both internal and external resorptions can be very difficult. For more than a decade in my private practice, the best way to make this determination preoperatively was to utilize a series of angled radiographs. If an area of resorption is seen with a parallel radiograph, shots can be taken from mesial and distal angles to determine if the resorption is internal or external. If the resorption moves with the angled radiographs, then the breakdown is outside of the canal space. If the varied radiographic angles does not cause the resorption to shift off of the canal, then it can be determined the resorption is internal. With the development of cone beam computerized tomography, also known as CBCT, we can answer this question prior to treatment. However, many practitioners don't have access to the CBCT and I don't take a cone beam scan prior to every case, but I usually do in resorption cases. This patient presented with a long-standing history of pain and thermal sensitivity from the number 18 region. The tooth was recently prepared for a crown and the symptoms did not improve following the restorative work. On examination, number 18 was sensitive to percussion and palpation with a lingering and painful response to cold testing. The periodontal pockets were within normal limits and there was no tooth sleuth sensitivity. Radiographically, the apical bone was unremarkable, but there was an area of resorption in the chamber. Clinically, there was no evidence of the resorption and the angled radiograph indicated the resorption was inside the chamber. The clinical findings were consistent with the diagnosis of an irreversible pulpitis with symptomatic apical periodontitis. The risks and benefits of root canal treatment, no treatment, or extraction were discussed, and a good endodontic prognosis was expected in spite of the resorption. Following access into the chamber, the dentin triangle was removed with a 2008 vortex orifice opener and the glide path was enhanced with a combination of 10 files and a 1504 vortex blue rotary file. All instrumentation, both hand and rotary, was done with 5.25% sodium hypochlorite in the root canal system. The area of resorption was near the mesial buccal canal orifice and every attempt was made to preserve the tooth structure near the breakdown to minimize the risk for perforation. The final shape was made with Pro Taper Next Files 1 and 2. The two canals in the mesial root joined at the root apex to exit a common foramen. These canals were filled to the coronal one-third of the root with gutta percha and Pro Root MTA was placed in the mesial canal opening to ensure a seal. There was no evidence of a communication with the oral environment through the internal resorption. The use of a cone beam CT can help facilitate localization of resorptive defects preoperatively. However, if this technology isn't available, a series of angled radiographs can help determine the location and extent of the resorption. If an area of internal resorption is identified, my filling material of choice is ProRoot MTA to facilitate the sealing of the root canal system in the most biologically compatible way possible.